What's up? It's time for another edition of ACC Baseball Etc. Presented as always by our friends, the good people at Pitch Logic, the system used by players, coaches, scouts, and instructors at all levels of play from youth leagues to the big leagues. The easy to use and affordable technology makes the platform accessible to every player at every level. All the metrics and features used at the highest level. Go to pitchlogic.com for more information. I'm Darren Vaught. Danny Graves, if you are watching on YouTube or X, is flashing the Pitch Logic by F5 Sports threads. Yeah. Love to yeah. see that. Uh, Danny, it's been a couple weeks. You've been on, yeah. on uh, stadiums, the rally duty, talking a lot more Major League Baseball than college ball, but Good to see you. Glad we can we can you know get the band back together for this one. Yeah. Joe Healy and uh, Kyle Peterson, um, Stephen Shock did some some great work in your absence. But this is this is the bread and butter here, right? The two of us. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that I'm back finally. Um, but I don't know if I can do any better than those three guys. The, I mean, those are some solid. Um, shows that you guys put on. I, I can't believe I missed the all name team. Anytime I miss Stephen Shock, I'm disappointed. And of course, KP is the guru. So I don't know what I can bring to the table, but I'm here. <laughs> did you um quickly before we get into more pertinent matters? Did you happen to see the all name team? Um, do you have any qualms with some the our selections? Uh, no, I, I want to study it some more. I saw the the graphic that you guys had for it, um, you know, in their positions, some of those guys I can honestly say I've never heard of, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I need but, some more. But they've got great names. So yes. that's okay. Now you've heard of them. Yes. I don't care if they are good or if they're terrible, they have really nice names. And of course, I guess that was, that was the whole point of it, right? It doesn't matter their ability. They just got, they're on the all name team. Yeah, and it just so happens that we've got some really good players who have mm -hmm. great names, like Cam Canarella is in the yeah, starting that's lineup. A given. Uh, that's a given. Duh, he's in. Titan Kamaka was in here. Um, Jonathan Santucci and Rafe Schlesinger were our two pitchers. Pitchers, yeah, I saw that. I mean, it's two pretty good pitchers. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, Santucci, that just it, – it, it sounds so, like, commanding, like – I don't know. Maybe it's the Italian mafia. I'm thinking Santucci. <laughs> I'll mess with Santucci's. <laughs> well, before we move on from the all name team, just know if you're listening, if you participated in that conversation on social media, I saw it. I saw the things that you said. I, I understand Vance Honeycutt might have been snubbed. Um, there's a Titsworth fella that received a lot of support for obvious reasons. That is worthy. Of <laughs> <laughs> but Joe Healy and I decided, you know, we're we're above the age of nine. So we're going to be <laughs> using See, that one. In I'm not above the age of nine. So <laughs> good thing Joe Healy was with you. <laughs> that would have that made the cut if I was on there with you. So, yeah. yeah I mean, honorable mention for sure. Honorable yeah. mention. Some other good yeah. ones mentioned as well. Um, was you know, Henry Godbout, was he on there? Godbout was not. He no. he and Henry Ford both were considered, but on the cutting room floor. Um, yeah. I think maybe the the simplicity is what makes Henry Ford's name great for this, yeah. but also yeah. it's what got him overlooked because of, um, you know, right. we have some complex isn't the right word. Some um, not as not as simple. Some sort of over the top names. Yeah. That well, needed if, to be included. Yeah, if you're a Chevy guy, you're not going to want Henry Ford on the list. Bottom line. So, <laughs> and we know there's a lot of Chevy guys up in North Carolina. So, <laughs> I also I, Ford I had to um, I had to to refrain from nominating Zach Morris of Duke myself, not because <gasps> it's it's such a great name, but it kind of is because of the Save by the Bell character. Like, and it's an yeah. iconic character, iconic name. So I, I had to hold back on Zach Morris just because it's simple. There's the the, the connection to the show. Um, but we just, there were there were uh, more elaborate names in contention, so, I guess is the way to put it. I, I guess, let me ask, how did you guys decide, like, did you have your own um, 
graphic built up and then you just talked it out and decided on one or how did you go about that? We alternated nominations, Joe and I. Um, okay. So, you know, we, 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 we did pretty well too. If, if one was, it was one spot between two guys, that sort of thing. We, we talked it out. Um, yeah. but no, we, we basically just alternated nominations. Where did it I was see very, that very formal buttoned up process, as you can tell. <laughs> hey, it, it was your list, so you can do it however you want to do it. Sure. Right? Sure. Yeah. So it must have anyway, been on X or where I saw it. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to look on the D1 site. I don't see it. Um, it was brilliant, though. It was brilliant. I, I love it. <laughs> it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Again, if you um, got upset about a snub to that team, obviously continue to let us know. It might be something that we continue the conversation on and and maybe alter the team by season's end. I don't know that we'll do that, but it's fun to hear from you. So yeah. feel free to hit us up on social at D1 Baseball at ACC BSB ETC. That's the name of the show, ACC Baseball, et cetera. So we should probably get into talking about a little bit of ACC Baseball. Yeah, because if not, I'm going to be stuck. I found the, the graphic. I have it. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. There uh, it is. I, yeah. Uh, okay, go ahead. I, I'll stop. <laughs> yeah. So um, basically, I think the word is in the two weeks that that you've been gallivanting covering Major League Baseball and, and other things, it's just a really good league, the ACC. And I feel yeah. like I've said it on our show and, and others for weeks now that it's not it's not simply Wake Forest and everyone else like yeah. we thought it was going to be like it was last year. I, we joked about the circle of parity last year where one team yeah. beats another who beats another who beats another and we come all the way around. I haven't even looked for this year, but I think this year is a more prime candidate for that. We've gotten some some weird series here and there. NC State gets gets a series from Duke one week and is swept by Louisville the next. Um it's just been it's been all over the place and especially with sort of our king of the ring concept where the top team in the league got toppled for the first few weeks of the season anyway, until Clemson really established themselves as the top team in the league to this point. Um, it was, it's been a little bit of everybody beating everybody, but it, everybody's good. We're, we're seven ranked teams again. D one baseball put out the mid season field of 64 projection and that featured nine ACC teams in. That's one mm -hmm. off of the all-time mark for the ACC and for any conference. The SEC has done it five times, the ACC once, with 10 teams in the tournament. So it's it's deep, which makes it a lot of fun. And there really yeah. isn't a series on the schedule that's that's not interesting with, with high-level yeah. implications in terms of what the, the postseason is going to hold. Yeah. Um, you know, with all that said, like looking at the rankings right now, um, I think you can make arguments for everybody. I guess what I'm getting at North Carolina is down to 13 and Wake Forest is 14. Wake Forest had a great week. Uh, North Carolina just continues to to win. They're 26 and six. They could be higher, but they could, you know, be one of the dominating teams when it comes tournament time. You mentioned NC state, how they're, really good and then they're really bad and then they're really good again. If they could figure out just a middle ground, they could be that eighth team that's in the top 25. Um, but yeah, I, I think if you're an ACC fan, you've got to be happy with uh, multiple teams to follow and not just like you mentioned, Wake Forest last year, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's awesome to throw Florida state in the mix too. Yeah. And it's undoubtedly going to help everyone's cause come yeah. selection time, right? Like I talk about the potential of that 10th team. If you're a fan of Boston College or Louisville or Georgia Tech, somebody who might be vying for that spot, or mm -hmm. maybe Miami drops down a spot and it, they find themselves trying to fight to stay in the 64 team picture. The other teams in the conference being good only helps. It only helps. Yeah. Uh, assuming that your team wins the games that it should. That's right. going to be great. And I think I think we're in a year in particular, Danny, that favors this scenario of many ACC teams getting into uh, regionals. 
Uh-huh. And you could say the same thing for the SEC because the Pac-12 and the Big 12 are historically down. Like yeah. I think I think that's going to etch out some space for at least a couple more teams than usual from already good conferences in the SEC and ACC. Like yeah. I think it's entirely possible we get a, a, a field of 64 that features the SEC having the most ever, maybe a, a, a 11, I mean, 10 possible for sure teams in and the ACC tying its, its high mark of, yeah. of 10 teams in like we, I think that's entirely possible. Yeah. Well, uh, regardless, the ACC will, will have one less than the SEC. So if SEC has You're 11, right. ACC is going to have 10. It always seems to work that way. You know, yeah. uh, ACC is always one less, but that's okay. I, I get it. Uh, I, I'm not going to be a homer about the ACC, even though there's, we know that there's a ton of good teams, but as I mentioned before, I, I think it's just nice that Florida state is relevant again because of who they've been for decades and then to not have them uh, part of the tournament last year was it just didn't look good for the conference. You know, everybody had their eyes on wake forest and we, and we know why, but they forget that Florida state wasn't a part of that. So I, I love the fact that they're relevant. Well, I, they're more than relevant, actually. <laughs> they're really yeah. good. Um, but like you brought this up to me through a text yesterday. North Carolina is undefeated at home. Yeah. That's, that's 20, crazy. 20 and 0. 20 and 0 at Boshamer Stadium. So God. this this is going to bring me to my first sort of broad view baseball question for you. I've got a few of those for uh-huh. us today. How much is home field advantage actually a thing? Like when you see that a team like North Carolina is 20 and oh, that's not a, if this is no longer a beginning of the season, small sample size, we right. are halfway through. That's a lot of games and a mm-hmm. lot of wins with zero losses in that particular column for the Tar Heels. How much of that is, you know, the variability with scheduling, you can, you can make things kinder to yourself at home for sure Mm. with with things like scheduling and how much of it is actually okay there is a tangible something about the heels playing at the Bosch that that makes them more able to win (laughs) they're not just playing lower level d1 schools at the Bosch (laughs) like they're playing quality teams so it's not a a fluke whatever reason this year they feel more comfortable at home and once you kind of get on that roll it's like oh we're home nobody's going to beat us at home and then you just feel that it's it's different it's such a different thing and teams coming in knowing that you're undefeated knowing that you have that kind of uh confidence behind you that we're at home like it's it's different like you go in with a different game plan you know trying to figure out what you can do i mean you look at Clemson, they've lost at home, but (laughs) only one game, but they've lost at home. You know, 20 and 0 is ridiculous. That doesn't even make sense. You you wouldn't think that a a top notch division one school would be able to do that as much competition as they play. But I mean, the feeling that they have, it's like, oh, we're here. We get to go back into our locker room. We have the crowd behind us and all cylinders are are on your side. So it's what a great feeling that's got to be but a bad yeah. feeling for teams coming in. <laughs> yeah. And for context in terms of teams that they've played at home, I mean, East Carolina as part of that three day, three games in three different places series that they had with the pirates, a narrow victory, but a victory two to one yeah. earlier mm-hmm. in the season over ECU. They swept Princeton. Um, they took on Pitt and swept them Rutgers for a couple of games and Rutgers came into the season with a a lot of hype and, and, um, and hope that they were going to be a really good team. So a couple of victories over them, they went on the road, of course, uh, against Miami, but they welcome UNC Wilmington who might be an NCAA regionals team. That's one of the teams that they played at the Boston. They run ruled them in seven innings, 11 to nothing. (laughs) The sweep of Georgia tech was loud when it happened and, and, you know, Georgia Tech is where they are in the standings, but it's a team that has flashed in certain yeah. instances this year and certainly is capable of, of one road victory in a series. Um, right. so, yeah, it's been it's been really impressive. Uh, I, I, I think there's there's hit ability there, as we've both seen in the past, but that exists mm. 
I mean, it feels like every park is is sort of a hitter's park anymore, right? I mean, North yeah, Carolina yeah. Went, to, went to the couch and smacked Wake Forest. <laughs> so they did the same thing there that they've been doing a lot at Boshamer Stadium. Um, I, I, it's just it's interesting to me that you can get this far into a season because I think baseball of 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 all the sports that we love and we follow and we like, and, and, you know, you and I are both hockey fans. Puck luck is a real thing. Maybe there's, Mm -hmm. there's a little bit more volatility in, in hockey, for instance, but baseball is one of those games. That's just any, any given day. Yeah. A starting pitcher can have a a bad outing. Uh, A team can, can just sort of, pull it all together offensively and string a bunch of hits together. There's just a lot of volatility, generally speaking, in the game of baseball that makes winning streaks hard. So yeah. you get 20 and 0 <laughs> at your home venue. And that's, I mean, that's just, it pops to me. Um, yeah. Specifically because of the, just the, the nature, the difficult nature that it is to, to that winning baseball games consistently has. Right. You could have one pitcher come in and dominate from another team. And then there goes your, your win streak. Yeah. I mean, it's that simple. Like this, this game is, it's a crazy game, but it's a great game because at any moment you could be worse than the team coming in to play you. And, but they haven't been, you know, last year, I I know we talked about, and the big thing was that Miami won um, so many consecutive home series, not, home game you know you just you try to win the series and that's that's a great feat but to do this and go 20 and 0 man that is that's crazy yeah i think that's the other mental aspect about this that fascinates me is that included in that 20 and 0 streak at home how many times now a handful the tar heels have gone into the third game of a series with the series locked up i mean it would be very easy yeah. to check out or check back Mm -hmm. a little bit in a third game Mm -hmm. of a series. Um, But similar to what they did on the road at Wake Forest, they've leaned in in those moments and picked up some, some big victories because of it. So North Carolina is a team that's really, really interesting to me. And, and I'm, I'm curious to see where they are in six to eight weeks because of the nature of, by which their team has been constructed. The lineup we know is great, both with with new guys and returners. The pitching staff is is the the most intriguing part of that. With, yeah. with two freshmen as your Friday and Saturday starters, it's it's. I talked to uh, I think it was the ep- when KP was was in for you. I talked to him about sort of battling this. There's there's conflicting concepts that are going to start to pan out for North Carolina and and they're going to hope that one wins out over the other and those things are that at some point Danny freshmen are no longer freshmen right they grow up they mature they become better players just like that so at some point it starts to click the other thing is the very real which we have seen in years past in particular with like a Duke last year especially Mm -hmm. for pitchers there's a freshman wall and there's there's threshold later in the year at which this is now the longest spring season you've ever played as a baseball player. Yeah. Right. So that can, that can wear on you too. Uh, It'll be interesting to see if or which one of those two ideas wins out for North Carolina. You know, uh, uh, that that's a great point. I I don't know the makeup of these kids. Um, Some of them, you know, could have that thought of, I belong here. It doesn't matter that I'm a freshman and they're going to continue, but there's also going to be that opportunity that, or that chance that they do hit that wall. But how long do you stay in the wall? You know, how quick can you turn it around and, and, and correct whatever's not right. Um, But you also hope that maybe they're just too young and dumb to understand what they're doing right now. They're just going out and playing, you know? I mean, because you have those kind of those type of guys too. Like they, they don't know how good they are. They're just they're just playing, and those are the guys you just leave alone and hope they keep playing. Yeah, yeah, no question. So North Carolina at, at their undefeated home mark is really interesting at this point. Um, I, what are you thinking on Wake Forest 
how, how are you how are you feeling about them coming off of a huge weekend they're starting to be healthier than they were at the beginning of the year and they've they've done a great job like treading water and, and i yeah. that sounds that that sounds like like a not not maybe a backhanded compliment but they they've done I think a really good job sustaining the injuries that they have and remaining good enough to sort of stay in the hunt. They're winning enough yeah. games to stay in the hunt. They've not yet dropped out of the top 25 and they've surged mm -hmm. back up um, after this past weekend. And now Nick Kurtz is back. He's homered in five straight games. He's hit seven home runs in those five games. Mm -hmm. They've got some guys healthy on the back end, like a Cole Rowland who, figured to be a, a really big bullpen piece for them at the yeah. season's beginning when he was injured and they just, they just knew, okay, if we can get him back mm -hmm. and, and be good enough when that happens, um, it's going to be a huge ad for us. So yeah, I, I think I'm curious what your thoughts are on wake Forest Cause I, I think we could be, we could look up in a couple of weeks time and it's sort of, Oh, this is what we thought they'd be all along. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's safe to say we haven't really seen for, for the most part, the real Wake Forest 2024 team yeah. because of injuries. And, uh, and I think people, when they, you know, going into it as the number one team in the nation, there's a lot of people checking you out making sure that you're performing or, or that you're doing what you're supposed to do as the number one team, but people don't see that they had injuries. So now when they're getting more guys healthy, now we're starting to see what Wake Forest, why they were number one preseason in the nation, right? So we you mentioned the the arms. You get a, a Cole Rowland at the back end of the bullpen. How comfortable is that for a, a starting pitcher now? Oh, so I got some I got some help again, you know, and it's not to say anything about the other guys, but Cole Rowland has done this. He he proved all year last year how dominating he could be. So you get him back and you get Nick Kurtz hitting again you know nick kurtz in the lineup even if he's not hitting just his presence in the lineup is a big deal it changes your whole approach to how you're going to pitch the guys in front of him and uh pitch the guys if he gets on base like it's it's a complete different approach um uh, on the mound so i think we're going to start to see the real wake forest and it's almost like yeah we talked about this before we came on you have that thought of it doesn't matter how good you are at the beginning you know, I mean, it's it's great to ha come off to a great start. Everybody loves having a great start, but you got to be able to play good towards the end too. So now they're getting guys back healthy. It's almost getting a like getting a, some trade pieces at the trade deadline. You know, you're getting extra guys. It's like, oh my gosh, these are our same guys, but they weren't playing all year. So now we got them back and they're healthy. So it, I mean, it's a big deal. Wake Forest is not a team to sleep on, but you mentioned treading water. I mean, Coach Walter, man, he he figured out how to keep these guys, uh, you know, literally keeping your head up. Keep your head up. We're going to be all right. And that that's what they are. Yeah, um, I think it's it's really well said. I We talked about the depth of of the league. I, I Not to rehash something that that KP and I talked about last week, but. We we talked about this concept of of teams being Omaha capable. And let's be real. There are teams whenever the regionals and the field are announced every year that are not necessarily Omaha teams, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. the guys that the conference champions from a lot of the one bid leagues. It's, it's um, if they were to make a run, it would be the exception to what we typically see with nine teams in, as of the midseason projections, how many how many ACC teams do you think are capable of a run to Omaha? It feels like even more than it was last year because I think we all thought and knew and believed, okay, Wake Forest, if nothing wild happens, we'll be there. Yeah. Outside yeah. of that, it, it it was like, okay, Clemson's hot at the right time. Mm -hmm. We knew what Duke was capable of. Virginia's always wanting always and, Virginia. and willing and <laughs> able to go on a run to the College uh -huh. World Series. 
but this year, like you can sprinkle in some others. I, like based on what we've seen to this point, I think you definitely throw North Carolina in there. Yeah, I think you definitely throw Virginia Tech in there. I know can, there's yeah. schedule, I know their schedule's been light and people want to see more, but we have what we have seen so far. Yeah. Right. And based on that, yeah. it's a really good team. It's a really good yeah. team. Yeah. I think Miami's well, gotta, got enough of some fight in them. It would be a little bit of a, a Cinderella story run if mm-hmm. it was Miami, but I think they could pull it off for sure. It just feels like, and they're not all going to make it, right? Like we we do this thing with regional time that I, I and, and especially in the preseason, I'm talking about it a lot. Like I had to resist my urge to call every ACC team a, a an NCAA regional because <laughs> I think they're capable based on certain things. But that's just the reality is it's not going to pan out that way. Even if right. the ACC gets nine, ten teams in, they can't all make the College World Series. It I means right. half of them won't. <laughs> half of them won't. Right? It would. It would yeah. be. It would be record setting if four of them acquired four of the eight spots in Omaha. Mm-hmm. So, without this being a, I think this team will conversation it seems like there's a a lot of teams who are are able to yeah i i mean call me crazy but i don't think you can sleep on georgia tech either you know i mean there's a possibility that they can sneak in they're 18 and 11 overall we know that they can mash (laughs) they can't pitch very uh, as consistently as they should but they could sneak in they could get hot and sneak in um I'm trying to look up at the the RPI, what these teams RPIs are right now. Um, But I love the Miami call. I love the Virginia tech. I I don't think there's a question. Virginia, Virginia tech should get into a regional that like, yeah, to me, there's no doubt, no doubt about them. Um, But when you talk about teams getting to Omaha, dude, it could be Clemson. It could be North Carolina. It could be Virginia. It could be Duke. It could be Florida state. It could be wake forest. Oh, wait, that's six teams already. Like yeah. six legit teams that could get to the College World Series. And of if course, it's not going to happen. And if two or three of them make it, that's a, I mean, that's a, that's a great year. If four yeah. of them make it, it's a banner year. Right. <laughs> it's, right. It's, right. It's, um, it's, it's one of the greatest seasons in ACC baseball history if four of them make it. So, it, yeah, that's, that's what makes, that's what makes all of this so exciting as we, are now into the second half of the season and and get to see these these this last stretch of conference series play out. I, I'm just I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I am too. That I'm I'm excited now that I can really start digging in. Uh, now that getting the, the big league stuff out of the way, now I can start digging in. You talk about Miami; their strength of schedule is, is eighth. <laughs> They're number eight. Yeah, overall. So and their RPI is 61 right now. I mean, lock and change. If they get hot too, Daniel Cuvay keep on mashing, <laughs> and Torres, these guys. Yeah, yeah. You you could outmash some teams for a while until all, you get all your pitching going the way you want it to go. Well, and, and Miami's pitching is has gotten better. Certainly, yeah, it's certainly gotten better. Gage Zeal for you know two of the last three weeks has had really really good outings. Mm-hmm. Um, you just don't know. You don't know, man. It's no. it's great. I I feel so good about the 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 last bit of the or the the second half of this this season. I would feel better about it if your your face wasn't frozen on my screen like it's been for the past several minutes. I don't know how I look. I know <laughs> that that uh, you're moving around perfectly. I don't know why. Like it looks like I'm biting my lip for the past ten minutes. Okay, so you see that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But since you kept answering me, I'm like, oh, maybe it's maybe it's rolling. Yeah, what do I you don't suggest know. here? What what do we do? Do we uh do we try to to, to blow into the cartridge? You gotta you gotta uh, unplug the <laughs> camera and plug it back in. Well, maybe we can see what we can do here. For uh, I feel I mean, like I, I, need I... The, I need the expressive Danny Graves for where we're gonna go next because it includes Hall of Name. Yeah. So should I um, refresh it, or is that dangerous? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, there what? it is. Okay, so, we have you. Yeah, so I switched to the FaceTime camera and got off the, the fancy camera because you could see my Pitch Logic shirt a lot easier this way. 
<laughs> that's why. That's why. Right? It's an that's ele- why. It was an elaborate ruse to uh, yeah. to, to help out the, the presenting sponsor of ACC yeah. Baseball. That's seven. right. That's right. People need to know. People need to know. Okay. So Hall of Name. Yeah. Reached a new a new level in your app. <laughs> you were, and, and feel free to fill in some gaps. You were as a co-host on Stadium's The Rally, mm-hmm. interviewing a, a certain comedian. Yeah. And did not realize neither you nor he realized at the time until you made the connection that you guys used to play baseball against each other yeah it was the most bizarre thing i've ever been a part of darren but probably the best tv i've ever been a part of um so our our studios for for the rally are right in the united center so we see all the advertisements and like you know when the blackhawks play the bulls are playing any concerts like our window faces the michael jordan statue so we see everything so one of our the bosses said, "Hey, this guy named Bert Kreischer is coming in to to do a comedian uh, comedy show this weekend." I'm like, "Oh, that's cool." And uh, he's like, "Well, we got to try to get him on." And I'm like, "I don't know who he is. I've never heard of the guy." Like, I, I mean, if he's coming to United Center, he's got to be pretty big. Yeah, he's so pretty they popular. Start, yeah, so they start telling me about all this stuff. So. I'm like, okay, no problem. I'll interview him. What you want me to take my shirt off? Is that why you're asking me to interview him? So, because he apparently doesn't like to wear shirts. Yeah, it's his, his thing. He his just show. like, yeah, does wear yeah. a shirt when he does yeah. his his podcasts or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, it, so, I mean, it is funny. Yes, it's hilarious. Well, so as we're preparing for this, we couldn't figure out the the time to like to have one co-host and then another co-host. So they're like, well, maybe you guys just host it. And then uh, Danny can wait till the segment's over and you guys can just like play on. So I wasn't even supposed to be a part of the interview. So like he had no idea that I wasn't like that. I had anything to do with this. So we, they end up changing the last minute. So I have to do the interview with the co-host uh, and I decide to go shirtless. I just had a vest on. I decided yeah. to just. No, it was a, a good vest. move. It was a good move. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you would have been able to get away with it without the vest, but it made it, it made it palatable, I think for people. Yeah. So it was great. It was very savvy. Yeah. I, I don't think I would have wanted to do it without the vest. <laughs> <laughs> My excuse was that I needed a place to put the microphone. So that's why I kept the vest on. Well, he wasn't <laughs> going to do the interview with the, his shirt off. We convinced him that since I didn't have a shirt on, he needed to take his shirt off. So he flipped it off before the interview even started. That's so, great. Yeah. So we start doing the interview and like, he's just rambling, doing little bits and stuff. And then our, the host said something about, well, we've been laughing at Danny Graves all day. Cause he's been preparing, you know, with no shirt on and da da da. And he's like, Oh yeah. I played against a guy named Danny Graves uh, back in, back in Tampa when I was little or when I was a kid. And then he started to go on to the next thing. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> And then the host is like, wait a minute, this is Danny Graves. He's like, what? Shut up. So then we start rambling off names. Darren, it was the most genuine, organic thing I've, I've ever been a part of I loved uh, in it. this business. I loved it. And, I'm and telling we, you. Um, the, the clip is, is out there on social media. My favorite part is that, again, neither of you realizes that like you're, you're both famous for for different reasons yeah and 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 so like he he remembered you because you were such a good player in your youth right and i think that's super relatable right we all had yeah i I can name the guys who i i'm 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 not like tight with in adulthood but am cool with in adulthood that were like Uh rivals at the county the opposite yeah. school in the county as me, yep. that sort of thing, right? Like it, I think we all, as as athletes, when we were growing up, had had rivals, rival teams, yeah. whether or not they were actually our friends. So Bert remembered you, and yeah. as being a great baseball player, yet had no idea because he's not, had no idea what 
how your career had panned out because he right. asked, he was like, so wait, what happened? Did you end up playing college ball? Yeah. <laughs> and your co-host explains to Bert, he's a Reds Hall of Famer. He's the <laughs> career leader in saves. And Bert just like, it was, I loved it. It was the most, you mentioned it, genuine. Bert popped so hard. He was like, wait, you played pro ball? Yeah, <laughs> was- yes. Dude, he, he went from this world famous comedian to, <laughs> oh my gosh, fanboying. Yeah, and then a little bit. I went it from great. I went from being a the cool host with my shirt off to be like, oh my gosh, this is like a bromance already. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it, it was it was incredible. So we ended up going to the show uh, a couple nights later. We went to his show and he told us all to come back and he got us a, a ton of tickets and he was so awesome. Um, so we were just kind of catching up and so my host again like she kept trying to remind him who I was and like, he knew who I was, but she's like, Danny knows this guy and this guy and this guy. And um, so he, she mentioned Warren Sapp and I said, he goes, Oh oh yeah, I know Warren Sapp. I said, well, let's FaceTime Warren right now. So we got Sapp on FaceTime, (laughs) me and him talking uh, to Sapp on FaceTime while Sapp is on a cruise with his wife at 1130 at night. And he's answering my FaceTime. So it was, it was just an unbelievable moment in, in TV. Like I, I can't even, it's, it's so hard to explain. And I actually, I looked for articles from 1991 when we were both seniors, I found an article that had uh, Brad Radke was the, in the title of it. So it was talking about how good he was, but it had like first team, uh, all, all County, second team, all County honorable mention. Me and him are both in, the, in this article. Like it, <laughs> It was, it's so crazy. Okay. So he wasn't a bad player. I know in the interview, he mentioned catching for Brad Radke. Like yeah. he, he was a pretty good player himself then. Honorable mention for, for our County. Yeah. That's, like if that's you're an honorable like mention, media. yeah, we had a, there were so many teams and so much talent there in, in Hillsborough County back in the day. I mean, the same place that Sheffield and Dwight Gooden came from and, you know, Fred McGriff, Tino Martinez, like it's, it was like a hotbed for, for baseball. Yeah, and he was honorable mention, and as a three A um, catcher, so he was better than some of the five A and six A catchers. Yeah, it was pretty impressive, man. But just the way that that all played out, you know, it's, it's like, so cool. And and you guys didn't even get to see the whole interview, probably, because yeah. the interview was like thirteen minutes long. <laughs> but we only no I, again the, the the one clip of you two yeah. making the realization is all I've seen. Cause that's what was on social media. That's it's so cool. So maybe cool. I'll send you a clip of the whole thing. Cause we talk about nipple rings and <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the, et cetera, right? ACC, yeah. BSB, et cetera. <laughs> I think, yes, no, I think you're right. I think nipple rings are included in the, the ETC purview there. Yeah. That's good. yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we talked about it. That's for sure. <laughs> So, all right, let's let's move on to to Hall of Name, a more conventional version of Hall of Name. Although that <laughs> that's great. Um, this does not include famous comedians. This does not include making stark realizations on television. But it does include something that we saw in the early MLB season in the yeah. couple of weeks since you and I have done one of these episodes together. We have not talked since Ronel Blanco's no hitter for the Houston Astros. Mm -hmm. And it got me thinking, I know you came out of the bullpen for the strong majority of your career, the most successful years of your career. But I, I wondered, I was like, I wonder if Danny's ever been part of a no hitter or like if he ever threw one in high school or something like that. So I tried to do some digging and, and do some research. I've got, a theory. I think I've got my hands on the box score for the closest you ever came. But yeah. first, from your mouth, like, did, was there one like in youth league that you ever threw? Like, I mean, does 12 count when I was 12? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess that's a little I mean, less interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, I threw a perfect game when I was 12. I struck out 17 out of 18 um, in an all star <laughs> game. Uh, <laughs> So let's see high school. I don't know. Maybe I did in high school. I know I did in Legion ball. Okay. Um, but as far as the professional, um, six innings is the longest I've gone without giving up a hit. And that was against the New York Mets. I'm, I'm assuming you might have that box score. Yeah. That's the one I yeah. pulled up. Yeah. That's when I pulled so, up. 
Yeah, it is of significance because Danny, do you remember um, the outcome in that game? Oh, we lost. Yeah, yeah. You you specifically took the loss. Yeah, I took the loss. Yeah, so, it was zero to zero after six, and uh, yeah. the seventh inning is when I gave it up, and that, that was my last inning. I was cruising for six innings against I Steve Traxel. The- yeah, yeah. Hall of Name um, yeah. alum Steve Traxel yep. was opposite yep. you on the mound for the Mets. I found the old New York Post article written about it the, for the next day's paper. Really? The New York Post headline was Mets wake up late, beat Reds. So, and this is truly the case because you said you had them hitless through six. They put up four in the seventh and then mm-hmm. two in the ninth to win it six to two. Um, what what do you recall about that game? Any specific um, matchups? Yeah, yeah. So I I don't know if I even struck anybody out. Um, maybe the Mets maybe struck out two. once for the entire game. Hold on, let me pull up your your line. Yeah, it might not have even been me that struck them out. Struck somebody out. You had one strikeout. And was it, it was Traxel the one batter of or theirs. Jeremy Burnett's? You got it. Jeremy Vernitz. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I remember it now. Well, I remember Jeremy because I played with Jeremy in Cleveland when we first came up and in Buffalo right. and AAA. So the six, six innings I'm cruising. I don't even, I might've had 60 or 70 pitches, but like they were just hitting balls at people, ground balls and pop-ups and just cruising. And nobody like acted like it was a, a no hitter still going like I knew there was still a no hitter, but nobody, you know, it wasn't like sit at the end of the dugout and stay away from him. It was just, we were just all just hanging out in the dugout between innings. But so I went out for the seventh and I feel like I hit somebody and then Jeremy and Burnett's got the first hit off me. Or maybe Jay Bell had something to do with in that inning. I think Jay Bell was 0 for 3 with a walk. So I, I think you walked I Bell might have walked him. and then Burnitz got the hit. Okay. And then did I hit somebody? Uh, let's see. Why do I feel like I hit somebody? Hit by pitch. I'm trying to find it. And you did. You hit Burnitz in the fourth inning. Okay. I hit him earlier. And then yep. he hit a double to left center field. Yeah. So that, that – uh, One of his two doubles in the game. He also got one off of he got one off of you and then one off of Chris Reitzma. Oh, in the ninth. Yeah. Yeah. So I gave up four, right? Did I finish that inning? I think I finished the inning, right? You or no? Yeah, I'm bouncing back and forth between the offensive and the defensive. Yeah, you got through seven whole innings. You gave up four on four hits, but just the one walk and the one strikeout. And the walk came that inning. How many pitches did I throw? Did it say? Let's see. Where's the pitch count? 80. 80 through seven? 80, in that 80 for your seven innings. So I probably threw 25 pitches that inning. <laughs> like, yeah. that, li- that inning was so long. So yeah, through six innings, I, I didn't even have 60 pitches yet. And I'm like, yeah. just cruising. And <laughs> of course, we couldn't score off Steve Traxel, who by that time in his career, he wasn't overpowering. And, we just couldn't hit him. He just kept yeah. putting up zeros. I'm like, dude, what, what do we got to do? Where's my run support? <laughs> I had that. But that was a story of that year for me. Like if I was pitching good, I'd have one bad inning. The next thing you know, it'd just be like five runs later and <laughs> take a big fat L. <laughs> yeah. It was awful. It was awful. July 5th, 2003, by the way. I don't know if I said that on the front end. July 5th, 2003 was the date Danny Graves had a no-hitter going through six innings with just the hit batter to that point. Yeah. Right? Because you walked yeah. one, and that yeah. would have been Burnett's in the in the, the seventh, or Bell. Well, walked in the Jay seventh. Bell, yeah, to start the inning. So, yeah. So, like, you were really mm-hmm. close to having – a perfecto through six yeah. in that instance. Wow. That's yeah. so like you said, you, you were aware, you knew that was happening. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. Everybody says they're not aware in the sixth inning. They're lying. <laughs> they are full <laughs> of it. You know, darn well, like, you know, after four innings, if you haven't given up a hit, 
I yeah. mean, maybe even after three for crying out loud, you got to start somewhere, right? If you go through the lineup one time without giving up a hit, you know that you haven't given up a hit. <laughs> like there, there's just no way you can say, no, I wasn't even paying attention to that. Liars. <laughs> <laughs> I love you know it. what I'm saying? I like, get it. I think, yeah. I think even if, even if you're just sort of like a batter to batter focused type of guy, mm-hmm. you have time in between innings. It's not like you're not talking to anybody. You know, right. somebody's going to be like, hey, you know, you, you're not giving up a hit yet, right? You yeah. know, you know, right? How many times do you look at the scoreboard and you just see a big fat zero? Like you can't yeah. avoid it on the scoreboard. But for for those that are batter to batter, you know, I'm just going one batter at a time. Well, when they come around the next time, you're like, oh, I didn't give up a hit to him. This is how I got him out. Oh, the next guy, this is how I got him out. He didn't get a hit either. You know what I'm saying? So you go and go and go and you realize these guys haven't got a hit off me. So yeah. Anybody who says they don't know, they're just they're full of doo doo. <laughs> Makes they're sense. They're lying. Yeah. Makes sense lying. to me. Makes sense I, to that, me. That's impressive that you pulled that up though. I knew when yeah. we you talked about it earlier, I knew this is where it was going. I knew it. Yeah. Um you're not July shocked 5th. that I could tell you everything that happened I, though, are you? No, I love it. You knew who started <laughs> opposite you, you know who you walked, you knew like <laughs> yeah, incredible yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Cliff Floyd, by the way. Hit yeah, a home run off of Chris Reitzma in Reitzma, the ninth. Yeah, that was that was the. the I feel like he. Cake. I feel like he got a hit off me that inning too, in seventh. He had six total bases, so um, he might have had a double, like a, a little bloop double. Yep, he did after off Danny Graves. Yep, yeah, that, that's double. It. Yeah, yep. <laughs> That's my boy Cliff. I know I couldn't get Cliff out. Cliff hit some homers off me too. I know what? it's so bizarre. Well, you know what? We might save Cliff for a, a Hall of Name all unto his own. I started to pull up his career numbers against you, but um, and I think maybe we've even talked about him in Hall of Name before. But yeah, anyway, one of my favorite no. teammates ever. But I'll save it for the next Hall of Hall of Name whenever we do it. <laughs> nice, love it. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. that's great. Good reminiscing from July of, of 2003. <laughs> uh, it built character. It built character. No, no. Yeah. And then getting the L. Yeah, dude. I, I still feel like it was an accomplishment. I yeah. Mean, six innings. Like, I don't know if I've, as a reliever that I went six outings of an inning a piece straight without giving up a hit. So to do it all in sure. one night, I, I feel pretty, pretty special for that, but didn't end up the right way we wanted, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had 15 losses that year. It was all good. <laughs> That's all right. It's all right. And that yeah. is Hall of Name where we let the former college and big league closer, Danny Graves, close out the show by giving us a glimpse into his life as a a dude, as, as we say <laughs> in the baseball community, his life as a dude. Um, Danny, awesome stuff. Yeah. Uh, what do you Glad got coming up? Back. This week, are, are you are you back on gonna, stadium anytime soon, or you got some ACCN stuff? So when this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, I'll be in Bristol doing uh, the all ACC show, and maybe nice. some ACC PMs throughout the week. Uh, but yeah, it's starting to kick in with the ACC stuff now. Good, a little, bit, little more excited about it. <laughs> Good, yeah. Good. I don't have yeah. ACC ball this weekend. I've got. Um, at USA Baseball, we host annually the National High School Invitational. So I'm going to be doing uh, the semifinal games as well as the final. That's uh-huh. Friday and Saturday for that. One of the cooler events that we do in Cary, yeah. the National Training Complex. Uh, Larry Sorensen so awesome. actually is going to be doing those games with me, our friend at Pitch Logic. So shout yeah. out. Yeah. Say out hello to Larry. Larry for me. Yeah. I will. Um, I will. So do you know a lot of the names that are going to be there already or has it been announced? It, the, te- the teams, the field has, has been announced. Uh-huh. Obviously, you know, some, some big commits and that sort of thing. I admittedly, it's the beginning of the week. I haven't really dug into my prep for it. But, yeah, um, yeah no, there's always – I mean, all kinds of alums have played in that yeah. game. You know, there's always the, um, the big-time – Pipeline schools, Orange Lutheran right. is, is always in it. Um, Don Bosco Prep out of New Jersey is always in it. I mean, there's, there's IMG a lot of, is IMG in it too. Yeah, some, I think they have been in the past. They're not a, a typical 
name that that we see in it. And there's always the cool thing is there's always a local host. So a oh. local team here in North Carolina always is named to be in the field and is is hosting um uh -huh. using my air quotes of course yeah. um yeah so so like you know there was um a, a first rounder to the angels jordan adams um mm -hmm. several years ago maybe not quite 10 years ago between five and 10 years ago who played in this game and this in this tournament and that's sort of where he broke out as a, a prospect and the angels ended up taking him in the first round. He's right on the cusp of making a big league debut with them. Wow. Gosh. The, so we, this could be one of those just turnarounds for somebody over the weekend. Like, yeah. To, no, it to be really get on the radar. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of scouting heat, a lot of really good competition. So if you play well at the NHSI, you know, typically it, it bodes pretty well for you. So anyways, that's, that's, that's so what awesome. I've got this weekend. Looking forward yeah. to that. Should be cool. Um, so yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for you on ACCN now that you're, you're with, yeah. you're with us. You did your major league yeah. thing for, for yeah. the start of that season. Now you're with us because we're, we're about to hit the home stretch. Yes. I'm, I'm married to the ACC. Uh, <laughs> the other, I can't say that I was like unfaithful. The other is just like, just to keep me busy. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound good either. <laughs> Can we say our goodbyes yet? <laughs> I've been hanging out That's with comedians too long, I guess. That's Danny Graves. That's an ill-advised analogy he tried to make on the way out. I'm Darren Vaught. <laughs> this has been ACC Baseball, etc. Thanks so much for listening or watching. Please follow along on social, rate and review, all that fun stuff. You know the drill. Until next time, we'll catch you later.